Hey everyone, welcome to part two of my 565C Haynes Hunter rebuild series. Now, if this is your first episode or first video you've seen of me, my name's Kurt. I'm a keen Spiro here in Mackay. I run the Exhale Adventures YouTube channel, obviously, Instagram page, Facebook page, documenting my diving, boat building, anything I sort of get up to, but mostly spearing, free diving, and obviously building this Hane Tunnel. Now, like I said, this is part two, so if you haven't seen part one, I'll put the link on the screen now so you can go back and watch that if you want to see the first stages of the rebuild of this Hane Tunnel. In part one, I basically went from a complete old school Hane Tunnel, gutted it down completely, grinded it out, and built it back up. I was just starting to put the side pockets in, and that's where we finished up with part one and obviously to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes make sure you click that subscribe button down the bottom there it doesn't cost you anything give that a click click the little bell as well so you get a notification when the next vid comes out and like i said if you want to see the past episodes jump onto my channel go back there's little bits and pieces of the boat build all the way through my past episodes as well so we'll head back to june 2022 and we'll keep chipping away and we'll get it up to the point where we're ready to start gel coating very australian sounds going on behind me right now lorikeets and and all sorts, they're super noisy. So yeah, part one saw us go from a complete hull, that old school Haynes Hunter, right back through to just a bare hull, stripped it right back, and then started building everything back up, frame filled, fuel tanks, heaps of extra glass, got to the side pockets, and then I decided I need a little bit of break. Life was pretty busy, did a heap of sparing, got a heap of fish, back to reality, I need to finish this friggin' boat. So I glass the side pockets out of the boat and then glass them into the boat. I did that with both the bottom side pockets and the top side pockets. Now the top side pockets took a little bit of thinking because they serve two purposes. One is to just put a bit of gear in, put your phone and stuff like that in. The second is obviously support the seat frames. So the seat frames come up and into those top side pockets. So they had to be measured right and made sure that they'd line up with the top of those seat frames and that obviously the seat frames would clear the eskies and all that sort of stuff. So a bit of thought went into that. As well as that, I decided I wanted to have these footrests put back into the boat. So I made them up as well. And you notice that they're made out of a white material. That white material is called Nema board. I think it's got a different name now. If I can remember it, I'll throw it up onto the screen. Super easy to work with, not at all itchy. Um, they use them for like the kickboards of kitchens and stuff like that. Got a sheet from a local cabinet maker and I just use that for a few little bits and pieces around the place. Yeah, like I said, really easy to work with. Glass seems to take to it really well if you key it up really well and chuck those guys in. I'll throw back to me now when I was putting that sort of gear in, adding those little things in and stuff like that. Just to a quick little tip, it won't cost you any more time, but it'll help you get a really good finish at the back end when you start flocating and all that sort of stuff when you get to the point that the boat's at now. So we'll just go back to that footage now and we'll see what I did when I added things into the boat when I wanted that nice smooth finish. I can get these couple of top layers of glass onto here and I wrap it around to everywhere that's going to contact in the boat so it's all nice and neat and consistent all the way around. And then what I'll do now is and I'll just infill the glass, I'll overlap it a little bit. Just put a couple layers of glass on there, that'll completely coat the Slamalite. What you can see in the boat will be really nice and smooth and neat. All just nice two layers of 450, really nice and neat. And then on the underside where you're not going to see, that's where the joins are. So you don't want those joins on the top side, you want them where you can't see them, so down underneath. Doing all those little things like that, you end up with a, a much better finish and that's something that I've been consciously thinking of with everything that I do. So when I put these footrests in, I gave it a really good, really good grind up and around where the glass goes. Cause I know that I'm gonna add that glass in anyway when I put those footrests in and you end up with a really nice transition into that original glass. A little bit of a crack, just right through the center there. So this, this just here, so this is the top of that cabin there, just flexes just a bit. So then I put a hole on a piece across here and then glass all that and glass it all in over top of here make it all nice and neat and just really beef it up just there and hopefully after that it shouldn't flex so like i said the sanding and prep for flocating kept on carrying on a lot of sanding a lot of just getting into all the nooks and crannies and all that sort of stuff all through the cabin laying on my back sanding the cabin roof and all that sort of stuff took a lot of hours a lot of time i really wanted to make sure i gave it a really good sand and a really good key up i wanted that new flow coat to really grip to that original flow coat through that whole process reinforce that hatch like the top of the cabin where it was cracked 
the hatch was cracked as well. It's a prime spot to walk up there. So I put some like little stringers and little ribs in it, blast all that up, and now it's super stiff and super strong. You can walk up there, it doesn't flex at all now. So all of a sudden, we're up to October. So getting late in the year now, and I'm still just sort of chipping away at the inside of the boat. The goal was to get it basically ready for flow coat. I went through, sanded the whole inside of the boat, any holes, anywhere that I thought I needed to add glass and bog. They all got ground right back to bare glass. From there, I moved on to filling holes. Now this dash had, if it didn't have a hundred holes, it was pretty close to it. It had a lot of different sanders and stuff over the years. So what I did with the bigger holes is I actually laminated some glass and I used that, cut that out, slotted that in, bogged it, re-glassed it all. So everything's nice and solid. No chance of there being that edge cracking out that you can see sometimes when people sort of fill with a bit of bog and then joke out over top and it'll crack around that edge. I didn't want any of that. So everything got ground back and it got re-glassed and bogged. So I also added an anchor shelf back in. Silly me thinking, right, I'm gonna put the anchor winch up on the deck. I don't need an anchor shelf anymore. One of those things where I've talked about through past videos is you need to have a bit of a think about stuff like this. So when water hits that hatch, that front hatch, it actually drains down and originally drains down onto that shelf and then out of the boat. So I needed somewhere for that water to go. So anchor shelf went back in. Yeah, I think it, it came up pretty neat. It looks really good in there actually. So I sourced the motor. I actually found a secondhand 2022 model, 200 horsepower V6 Mercury. Um, it had 115 hours on it, which is bugger all. It's had its 100 hour service. We got it shipped here to Mackay and basically it just sat in the shed now for a few months until I fit it up. So the work continued with the outside of the boat and I'll just throw back to me here. I'll just talk a little bit about a mistake that I made when I originally ground the boat out to do with making that transom all nice and flat again. You can sort of see there where I, where I ground back to originally. You can see that glass there up and around here. Now what I didn't do and what I wasn't thinking about, what's going to happen at the back end when I want to paint. When I ground that gel coat back originally, I only pretty well ground the gel coat off and a little bit more. I should have ground that back to like super thin, you know, to like a couple of mil thick. Because when you whack that transom in and then you glass over top of that transom, you want to be able to put all your, you know, four, five, six, however many layers of glass you're putting over your transom. You want to be able to build that up onto here and you want it to end up being pretty level with what you already had there. Now, I only ground back a mil or a couple of mil, so I wrapped my four and, and more layers of glass over that transom, and I ended up with a big fat edge here, and it just did not sit flush, you know, you put your straight edge here, and you have this massive gap, you can nearly stick your finger in there. So I found somewhere on the transom where I could run my straight edge from, and that was gonna be like the point, my, like my point of reference for the, for the whole transom. So I used those top two corners as a point of reference and just went through just filling, sanding, filling and sanding until I got it within a couple of mil. Doing a bit of work on the end here. This is something else that has caught some other people out as well. You get to the end of the project and think you're all done, everything's painted and everything's sweet. You put your gunnel rubber on and you put your end cap on and you realise you haven't repaired this little, this little join on the end here. A mate of mine had it and he gave me the heads up. So I've, I've done that. So I've, Filled it in so that the end cap can sit in there. Sit nice and neat. That's a nice little hot tip for everyone. From there, I moved on to the gel coat prep. So I plan to tackle from basically from the gunwale down. Any major cracks that I could find, I ground them out and I re-glass them. There was quite a few along the strakes, as you can see here. There was a bit of damage up on the nose fair bit of trailer damage and stuff like that. I made sure that I ground all that right out, re-added glass. I wanted to use very minimal fairing compound. If there was any fairing on there, I wanted it to be super thin. I had a nice strong surface. I wanted glass there. I didn't want that fairing compound if I can avoid it. A little bit of grinding, a little bit of glassing on the bottom of the boat. It's pretty easy just laying on my back, laying on my side and doing it. I started putting some fairing compound on the bottom of the boat. Sanding that back, that was not easy. It was not easy at all. So I made the choice to flip the boat over. Well, this shed is reasonably new. It's only about sort of 10, 10 to 15 years old. It's cyclone rated for up this way. So it's maybe a little bit stronger than the average shed. I did a few little test lifts and I decided to flip the boat basically off the shed. Now how I attacked it was I supported the back of the boat that you can see there through the holes in the rear of the transom. And I supported using the eye on the bow of the boat. It basically lifted the boat up off the ground. And then as you can see here, I used a series of chain blocks, come alongs, and just basically spun the boat in the air. There's not much more to it than that. A few things that you can get caught out by is the length of your chain blocks or the length of your come alongs and 
and height clearance. Um, that did catch me out a couple of times through this process. But apart from that, it went pretty smoothly, as you can see here. It took me maybe two and a half, three hours or what. But having done it one time, definitely when I flipped it back the other way, it was a hell of a lot quicker. So now I was able to fully attack the bottom of the boat. It was so much easier, way easier than laying on my back and trying to do it. Like what I was saying with the fairing, I didn't want big, thick bits of fairing anywhere. So anywhere where I needed to add glass, I added glass. You can see me adding a little bit there on the edge of that planing strake. I just basically walked through sanding. I did this multiple times. Every time I'd find something, I'd circle it with a pencil. I knew that I had to go back there and pay a bit more attention there. And I did that probably three or four times around the whole boat, just sanded found spots, filled it, sanded, found spots, and I just kept doing that till I got the bottom and the sides of the boat to a point where I thought they were pretty good and ready for gel coat. Now you would have saw a shot there of the bottom of the boat. You see all those stone ships there. Now that's where the pad was sitting when the boat was sitting upright, so I hadn't actually attacked that point yet. Pretty well the back end of the boat, the whole back end of the boat looked like that. It had little tiny stone ships all across the whole back end of the boat. How I tackled that was I did a pretty runny mix of fairing compound and basically smeared it across just about the whole bottom of the boat and then sanded the whole bottom of the boat back. Huge effort, but I think it was definitely worth it at the end because I ended up with a really good gel coat result. Now, the fairing of the transom. Like you saw earlier, I did have a few issues with the transom in terms of getting that nice and flat. I did build it up a lot with glass and got it pretty close, so, but it still needed a fair bit of fairing to make it all smick. And basically that process for me was just cover the whole thing with fairing compound. I made up a big long board, sanded it flat, fair, sanded it flat, fair, and I did that at least six, seven, maybe even eight times before I got it to the point where I thought it was ready for gel coat. The end result was quite thin amount of fairing, which is what I wanted, and it's super flat, it's dead flat. It came up really, really good, I was stoked with that. Now obviously with the transom sorted, the sides of the boat sorted, the bottom of the boat sorted, you know what's next, gel coating. I lined the shed with drop sheets. I bought myself a ventilation fan. It has five meters of ducting, I think it is. And I had that going through what I call a scrubber box. So we've got scrubbers on some gear out at work and they work by just adding water to dust, basically to try and try and knock the dust down in some of our equipment at work. So I figured something similar to that's got to help with breaking down a bit of that gel coat pumping out the back end of that ventilation fan. So I made that little scrubber box up with some sprays on it. When it come to actual spray day, I put a tarp over top of that as well. And that helped capture that little bit of mist that was coming out still from the sprays and from the force of the fan and all that sort of stuff. Radio guys, that brings us through to March 2023 now. And that's where we're going to finish this episode. So part three is going to be purely gel coating and flow coating this entire boat, that whole process, how I went about it, a few little tips and tricks that I learned along the way, things that I found and things that I found out after, and some issues that I had because it definitely wasn't smooth sailing. It was in the end, but at first it definitely was not smooth sailing. We did have some issues. Yeah, I really wanted to document those issues and let you guys know so you don't make the same mistakes that I did. And if you don't want to miss that future episode, make sure you click that little subscribe button as well as that follow my Instagram page when I do put that video out. I'll let you know on there as well. Until then, thanks heaps for watching guys and I'll catch you on part three. All right, we're ready to catalyze and um, see what happens.